Now, since I focus so much on recording and microphones and such, I figured it'd be good to run down a quick difference between some microphones for maybe first-time buyers and things like that. Now, we're going to focus on dynamic and condenser mics. There's other types of mics, like ribbon and shotgun, but you don't really need to go into detail with those quite yet. So, the difference between a dynamic and a condenser is dynamics are typically used for live situations. Like, you see someone singing a live band or something like that with a Shure SM58, which is just a variant of the Shure SM57, which can typically be used for instruments and miking drums, cabs, stuff like that as well. It just has a little wind guard built into it. So, the difference between the dynamics used for live and a condenser, condensers require phantom power. Phantom power typically can come on, um, it can come with your interfaces if you already have an audio interface. You can also get a preamp or just a dedicated phantom power box. Now, I'll recommend some, uh, a cheap preamp really quickly. It's the Art Tube MP. It costs about 30 bucks, and there is actually a way you can mod it if you're electronic savvy or know someone who's handy with soldering and things like that to make it sound a lot better for pretty damn good value for your money. It's a good bang for your buck if you're handy with electronics. And I'll have a link to the actual guide to modding it, which I had to dig up. The links online actually died for the most part, but I thankfully had it on my hard drive, so I dug it up and I have uploaded it so people can take a gander at it. Now, I'm going to differentiate between some of the patterns. Now, condenser mics are typically used in studio situations or when you want to pick up a lot of frequency because they are a lot more sensitive than dynamic mics. So, mics come with a variety of patterns to them as well. So, this is one of the main things you want to look out when you're buying a microphone. So, we'll start out with the typical pattern. First pattern is cardioid. Now, cardioid pattern, you'll take a look here. This is where it picks up from where the capsule is. So the capsule is picking up just in this direction, so you have about close to, say, 180 degrees of coverage with this. Cover a little bit back, cardioid, the reason it's called that is because it's kind of a heart-shaped pattern. Now next we have a hyper. Uh, we'll go with a super cardioid next. Now super cardioid tightens up the pattern up top, but it also picks up a little bit more in back. Then you can go to hyper cardioid, same thing little bit tighter pattern up here and it picks up a little bleed to the back. Another typical pattern you'll see is omnidirectional. Just an omni mic, it picks up a whole 360 degrees around it. Then there comes figure eight. Obviously the name's appropriate to it. Picks up in front and in back, but doesn't pick up so much to the side. Then you have your typical shotgun pattern. Now shotgun patterns, you'll notice it picks up slightly to the side and some to the back, but typically a really tight pattern towards what you're pointing it towards. This is why what you'll see people in the field using like reporters, um, audio professionals, people with the booms, like the big boom mic, uh, big boom handles that they use with this at the end pointed over say an actor or something like that. This is how you do things like that, just picking up a very specific area of effect. Now before when I mentioned that portable vocal type setup and the audio thing, I figured I'd just show you a quick picture of what one completed will look like. Something like this, where you can just place your microphone inside it and isolate all around it. Now there's also commercial products like uh, reflection filters. I personally have an SE reflection filter, it costs kind of a pretty penny, and it's not practical to carry around with me, but it's more for vocal isolation. It would go behind my microphone and reflect and in combination with actual acoustic treatment, it makes the vocal capturing a lot smoother and results in a finer end product. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're buying a portable field recorder, if you go that route, make sure it has a mic input. Other than that, you want to make sure that it meets your standards. Check what types of quality it can record in, check how big the memory is on it, check its battery life, um, things like that to look out for. Now, I previously used to work as a manager at a guitar center um, of the recording and keyboard department, so I'll give you some tips for when you're actually going out and shopping. Uh, it, I'm going to put it this way. They, the people that are actually selling you, the salespeople, they are salespeople. They work on commission. Different microphones offer different levels of commission, so they might push a microphone that earns them a little bit more bang for their buck, or a product that earns more bang for their buck, uh, over one that is potentially better. So when you go to the place, do some research online on the microphones and things you want to look at, and ask for some demos. Simple as that. It's, it, it should be convenient for them to set up a demo for you, that way you can choose between the various ones. And like I said, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a quality microphone set up. While some of the more expensive studio mics 
are going to be pricey, and the same thing with tube amps and things like that. Uh, you don't have to always go with the best quality, because with anything where your signal chain, the, the worst piece the worst piece in your signal chain is going to be the best you're recording sounds. So if you have, say, a $1,000 mic, $1,000 preamp, and a $5 cable, the $5 cable is going to be the weakest link, and that's going to make everything else sound like crap. Same thing with if you have $1,000 mic, $1,000 preamp, and you have, say, a quality cable, and you have a poor digital audio converter on your sound card. It's going to affect the quality of your recording. So keep that in mind. As far as field recording, if it has a microphone input, you can get a portable phantom power box. They're a bit pricey, around 80 bucks, but all you have to do is pop some batteries in it and you can use your studio mics out in the field. Otherwise, you can just use your laptop with an audio interface if it has that. And yeah, that's about all it takes to get out in the field and actually start recording. <laughs>